my thing, whatever that thing is. Whoa, that is just too much. Uh, let me go after this guy. This is just a bad place to be in. I hate traffic hour here. This is um, School Street. There's a reason why they call it School Street because there's so many damn schools in the area. And um, I think there's like seven schools in this area, maybe even more. Um, it's just congested as can be. Um, and everybody's trying to get on the freeway. There's a freeway entrance right behind me. And all the cars want to get in on the freeway entrance. And it's right next to downtown, so people are leaving downtown. And they're leaving another school district up in front. Oh, man. Yeah, you can see the traffic there. That's freaking Honolulu traffic for you. <sighs> I've been riding only for 10 months and uh, now people are surprised when I ride with them and um, they um, they think I'm a newbie and I am you know I will I will accept that you know um, but I know I've done a lot more riding than they have like in I mean the the rate that I'm riding I'm riding every day and I'm putting in as many miles as I can um, and I ride a lot more than a lot of people. Even though this island is really small, I force myself to ride as much as I can and try to get as much experience riding under, in various conditions as much as possible. I mean, it'll, it'll rain and I, you know, welcome rain. I wanna, I wanna get good at it. As um, one of the, the guy I met that raced, um, he said, you need to slip, you need to drift both tires while your knee is down so your knee and your two tires are slipping on the road at the same time in order to keep up that's the only way you will place otherwise you'll never um, you'll never make it you know you got to get good at it that's the only way you'll do it and uh, shucks I, I want to know how it feels like to slide both wheels um, sliding the rear wheel is scary enough. Sliding the front is really scary. Sliding both, controlled, incredible. Now, um, and then you slide with your knee down on the racetrack when the racetrack is wet. You know, <laughs> I wonder what that's all about. Um, you know, going back to my previous video where a um, guy was asking me about how you get good at it. Well, you know what? I think the next thing I want to get good at is wheelies. Now, I think if I get a, a fitty or a 50cc mini, mini bike, you know, you can do wheelies on that and fall off at 10, 15, 20 miles an hour and it's not going to be a big deal. Um, or even 5 miles an hour, you know, but if you fall off like on a motorcycle doing a high speed stunt, man, you're screwed, you know? So. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I think it's I think it's um I think it's important that you start off small and then move yourself up. I mean, don't get me wrong, I I, I did I did um, make two attempts at a stoppy, two to three attempts at a stoppy, and I got it right, you know, pretty much the first time. But it's not because you know it's not because I just I just learned it the right way. It's because. You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about how it's done, you know, and I used to do it on a mountain bike. That's why I'm able to do it. And these downhill stoppies like this, you know, I, I do it pretty frequently, you know. I used to be able to balance for quite a while on, the, on a bicycle, on a front wheel. So it's not like it came overnight and I just got it. It took quite a bit of practice. And the practice done on the mountain bike was actually far less costly um, than if I had learned on a 
on a motorcycle, you know. And you know, funny thing is, I never did a stoppie on my Katana or my SB650. Oh wait, no, just before I sold my SB650, I did like two stoppies, you know. But when I got the R1, I, oh, shoot man, I just got hooked on stoppies. <clears throat> but anyway, the, the idea is, there is, a, there is a way to get good. It's just a matter of how, what you're willing to pay and um, which route you want to take. Some routes are more expensive. I mean, I know guys that started stunning on a thousand cc bikes. And, and I, know, I, knew, I know a guy that just, his very first bike was a 1300 cc Hayabusa, okay? And he almost got wasted a few times, you know? I rode with him, I stopped riding with him because, um, well, I haven't seen him, but every single time I rode with him, he almost ate it. I mean, he almost really screwed up and and got hammered so um, you know there's routes to take and you know maybe maybe the 600 cc was too big maybe I should have started on a 250 um, but but you know I'm a big guy so you have to take that risk and assess it and say okay um, you know considering I'm a big guy um, I'm very strong I can handle the bike you know the 600 cc bike okay so that's that wasn't such a bad trade-off um, and, 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 and I've been riding for riding bicycles and I kind of know how to handle things. So, you know, you have to assess your risk and what your, which route you want to take and what you're willing to pay. For me, I am not willing to pay the price of having, dropping my bike and smashing it up or overclocking. I want to learn the right way. So I'm thinking of even buying a cheap old 50 CC moped or scooter and learning how to wheelie. And at least, I mean, it is nothing like a you know thousand cc bike wheeling a thousand cc bike however i will have mastered a great chunk of wheeling so by the time i get to a big bike like a 600 or a thousand cc bike it'll be the price the price will have been very small to to master it to get there so there's paths you can take you know i have not attempted to really learn how to wheelie on this bike because i know better I'm not going to pay the price of screwing up because it's fairly catastrophic. You know, I'll do it like on a $700 moped and wreck the moped, no big deal. And, and you know, you might get hurt a little, but not, not on a big bike, you know. <laughs>